All right. Um, hi guys, my name is Hannah, and today I'll be talking about Polymer, which is kind of an extension on what Laura just talked about. We, we didn't really plan this, it just kind of happened. Um, <laughs> so what is Polymer? Well, the first real question we have to ask ourselves is, what are web components? Um, so, history of web components, uh, there's this guy named Dmitry Glazkov, who is a Google uh, software developer, and he's also known as the father of web components. Um, and in 2010, he sparked this whole new conversation when he asked these three questions. Um, why does the browser not have native templating? Um, why can't elements have their own scope? Or in other words, why can't they have their own local DOM? And why can't we bind data to these elements? So he and the web apps community wanted to confront these issues, so over time, web components came to be. So what are they? Um, they're basically a collection of standards uh, which over the past few years have been landing in browsers. Um, what they're used for is, is so web developers can create their own HTML, their custom HTML elements. Um, and there are four specs, these four specs, which make a web component a web component. Um, you can create your own custom elements, your own tags, uh, you can import HTML, and you can have their own templates. Um, and this should all sound very familiar to you. We've been using something very similar to this, um, which is Angular directives, um, they do those, those three things. Um, in Angular directive, you're creating a custom HTML element and you are binding data to it. But, um, well, there are a lot of similarities and there are a lot of differences between the two, but one of the main differences is that components have this thing called the Shadow DOM. And the Shadow DOM is kind of what it sounds like. It's like a miniature DOM that doesn't really affect the main DOM. Um, it's specific to components and allows them to encapsulate JavaScript and CSS um, to that specific component. So for an example, if you created a special button with a specific design and like an animation using JavaScript, um, it, should, uh, it should exist on its own and that, that JavaScript and CSS shouldn't affect anything else on the DOM. So that design, that CSS shouldn't affect anything but that, but that button. Um, so let's get back to Polymer. Um, what is Polymer? Polymer is a library built on top of web components um, that allows us as developers to create our own HTML tags. Uh, it was created at Google in 2013, um, and it's been pretty well received. Um, a lot of people, mostly people at Google, say it's like the future of web development. Um, it initially got a lot of flack, and it still kind of does, because when it came out, the only browser that supported it was Chrome. Um, and so when you wanted to use Polymer, you actually had to download this other technology and use platform.js as a polyfill in order to use it in other browsers, which just added a whole level of complexity that people didn't want to deal with. Um, at this point, Chrome and Opera fully um, support it, and Firefox is almost there, and then Internet Explorer and Safari are like getting closer. Um, so it's pretty soon, I think Polymer is going to be seen a, a lot more. Um, so why did Google come out with this technology? Like, what problems does it solve? Um, so let me ask you this. During Stack Store, how many of you tried to avoid uh, working with HTML and CSS? Oh, look, everyone. Um, yeah, that makes sense, because it's immensely frustrating. Um, if you want to put like a, a tab list in your site, how do you do that? You go to Google, you type in, how do I put a tab list in my site? And then you copy and paste the code that you find. And the code could be you know, pure HTML, it could be HTML plus CSS, it could be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And there are a million different ways to create the same thing. So uh, Google wanted to create this, this thing that um, allows uh, you to standardize what, you, what you're making. Um, Polymer is also super useful because it has this extensive library of, of pre-built elements for developers. And uh, Laura was talking about this because these elements that they've designed follow material design. So um, yeah, all of, the, all of the things that you, can, you use follow those standards. Um, so let's go through some examples of how you, create, you can create your own custom elements. So right here we have two HTML files. Uh, the first one, um, it sources the, this Polymer library, and it uh, references this DOM element HTML file here. It links it. So here it um, has this DOM element tag, which is created in this file. And so this is the structure of creating your own Polymer um, element. You, you, you have this DOM module tag, which creates a local DOM, which was what I was talking about before. It's the shadow DOM. And you name it 
here with the ID and you name it here. So these have to be the same. And in the template here is what is going to show up in the actual element. So if I put like an H1 tag with something in it, it's going to show up here. And what's really cool about this is if you inspect it, um, what you see in, well, this, this works in Chrome because Chrome supports this. You actually see DOM element as its own tag, and so you can debug from there. Um, in like Angular directives, I'm pretty sure what happens is that it, it renders into the new HTML template that you provided it in the directive. But this itself is its own element. Um, and this other example, uh, we have, again, index HTML and this picture frame.html. And you could, again, reuse these reuse the, the, the tags all over the place using different image sources. Um, in this example, it has the DOM module again, the ID, the name, um, and it, this template. But inside the template is the style tag. So the CSS is scoped for that element. So the, the CSS here isn't going to affect any other elements inside your DOM. Um, there are a lot of you know, different cool things you can do with these templates. Uh, for instance, here uh, you have this configurable name tag go here, it's created here. Um, and now you have this owner property. We've seen, we've seen syntax like this before. Um, and in your script tag, you have these properties. And you, you, you name owner. It's a type string, and it's a value rows. You could change it to be whatever you want, and it'll change up here. Um, and then in your actual index.html file, you can actually change, change a property. So if you go in here, it should change it to Bob. Um, so you can do a lot more than this. Um, and, but what I think is really cool about Polymer, it has this giant catalog of things that's already there for you. So you go in here, uh, iron elements, iron collapse. You can look at a demo um, and use these things in here. Um, it tells you exactly what you need to do. You have balanced all these. And then you basically copy and paste this stuff. And you have properties for all these different types of elements. Um, and what I know that I, I would want to use this for is because this is created by Google. They implement a lot of Google APIs. And so things like Google Maps, all you need for Google Maps is this single tag. Um, you, don't even, you don't even need this here. You can just put close, opening Google Map tag, closing Google Map tag, and you have a Google Map. And then latitude and longitude here uh, determines like, where it's centered on when you first open the page. And then, of course, there are tons of different properties and stuff you can change. Here's some demos. Um, drive these around. And yeah, so there are tons of different things you can use this in this Polymer catalog. I encourage you guys all to check it out. And thank you.